up everybody? Sadia Kaap here. I'm an electrical engineer doing PhD in machine learning here in Canada. Today we are talking about how much would it cost you if you want to do an MS or a PhD here in Canada. I made a similar video about it two years ago but I figured a lot has changed since then. Inflation is on the rise worldwide whereas student scholarships not so much. So I figured it was time to do an updated version of how much would it cost you if you want to study an MS or a PhD here in Canada. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First things first, tuition fee. Yes, I know it might seem a little bit strange that you have to pay tuition fee as a scholarship student, but yes, here's how it works in Canada. So to figure out what's your tuition fee, go to your university's website and look at the tuition fee structure. Now, there are two things that you have to keep in mind about tuition fee. There will be different tuition fees listed for local students, Canadian residents, permanent residents, and the international students. But if there is an hysteric next to that tuition fee, go down read the description of that little hysteric mark because here's what it looks like on my university's website it says that in quebec international students pay the same tuition fee as the quebec students the quebec residents or canadian students the listed fee structure is around four thousand dollars for quebec students whereas for international students it can be around fourteen thousand sixteen thousand but because of this hysteric because of this fee exemption i paid the same tuition fee that quebecer uh, canadian student or a permanent resident student pays. So my tuition fee in the end comes out to be around $4,000 a year that I pay out of my scholarship. This is my first expense. Your second expense is going to be your health insurance. That again you can find out very easily from your university's website. So go ahead look at your university's website wherever you're planning to apply to see what is the mandatory health insurance. Yes health insurance in canada is mandatory so when you come here study as an international student a foreign student you have to pay this mandatory health insurance there are some exceptions to this rule though uh, if your country has an agreement with the province of quebec for the ramq insurance then you don't need to get this private health insurance on your own this applies to a very minority group because only a few of the francophone countries allow this sort of health insurance agreement in all of the other cases you have to pay the mandatory health insurance fee and the private health insurance with my school is in the form of a group insurance plan and it costs around $900 a year all the other provinces will have somewhat similar structure but just to be sure go ahead check at your own university's website to see what is your health insurance fee and then add that as a second expense in your income and expense calculator sheet Coming on to your third expense, well, that's going to be your dental insurance because health insurance and dental insurance are two separate things. Health insurance is mandatory, the dental insurance, even though it's not mandatory, every university will highly recommend you to get a dental insurance because if you don't have a dental insurance, something as simple as a dental cleaning once a year can cost you around four to five hundred dollars. You don't want that. Rather than that, pay your dental insurance and you can see different types of dental insurances that are suggested by your school and basically you can also subscribe to them directly through your student portal most of the time so add your dental insurance expense next to your health insurance on top of that there are some additional fees that you have to pay that you have no choice for example your university might have some student newspaper fees or gymnasium fees or sports club fees or some sort of student club fees some of these can be optional and you might have the option to go in your student portal portal and cancel those but some of these will be mandatory and you will not be able to back out of those in your student portal these generally generally come out to be around $200 per semester which means per year for about $600 you should budget for these additional fees in your expenses your next mandatory expense that you cannot back out of is going to be cellular data plan. In general, if you're with any of the big providers like Bell, Rogers, Fido, Virgin, generally, you will pay a monthly fee which will give you a certain amount of internet data, unlimited calls Canada and US, and unlimited SMS. So this is, this is a pretty standard plan. You only get to basically choose how much data you want. So you have to pay this around $50 to $80 per month, no matter what your plan is. So this is something you should take into account. Now let's talk about your expenses that will vary from city to city depending on which city of Canada you're going to study in and live in. That is going to be your rent. 
depending on where in Canada you will be living, you will of course have to pay your monthly rent and you can check this for checking what is the average monthly rent in different cities in Canada because there is a wide discrepancy from city to city so your rent will be sort of your biggest determinator in calculating how much your monthly expense is. Do check on your university website if they provide student housing and how much it will cost you and add that in your as the next item in your expense calculator. A general tip for you do not do not get a place that is very far away from a metro station or a public transport station and speaking of metro every city will have some sort of monthly student plan for using the metro you can use the metro unlimited number of times by paying a fixed monthly fee for the transportation system once you have the card you can recharge it every month for around 50 dollars and you can use it unlimited number of times as long as you are a student the next transportation cost for you will be your uber uber is very 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 expensive here and depending on where you want to go it can cost you anywhere between 25 dollars to 70 dollars for taking one uber trip but do budget around 50 to 60 dollars per month for your uber transportation and 50 dollars per month for your opus card your next big expense will be of course your food that includes your groceries that includes ordering food with uber eats or skip or doordash or whatever and that includes eating out on average budget around 600 dollars per person per month in your budget for your groceries the next one is going to be an optional expense depending on whether or not you need a gym subscription for me i do and fortunately i do have gym at my university it's around like 50 dollars per semester and 150 dollars a year but anywhere else it's going to cost you a lot so if your university does offer gym and if you want to access that facility do take advantage and get your gym subscription with your university rather than anywhere else finally i do budget around 200 dollars for personal shopping this can be clothing this can be the stationery you need this can be any device gadget anything you need you won't use that every month but then you will have some months where you're buying for example an ipad or a macbook or anything that will then mess up your budget of an entire year so do save around 200 dollars per month for these personal shopping items so with all those expenses Personally, for me, with this budget, my expenses per month come out to be around $33,000, which is way more than my scholarship alone. So let's talk about some income streams that can help you manage your expenses as a student in Canada. As for the income streams, of course, your first income stream is going to be your scholarship. In Canada, you're allowed to have concurrent scholarships. What does it mean? It means that you can have one scholarship from your professor, another one from an external organization, and then a third one from another external organization. You can have an initial scholarship from your professor or university. It can range anywhere between $20,000 to $50,000, depending on where you are in Canada. Generally, the average here in Montreal is around $21,000. If you have an external scholarship, like I have FRQNT, FRQNT will also give you an external funding, which is around, for me, $21,000. When you get an external funding, your original scholarship from your professor can be completely slashed or reduced to maybe 5%, 10% of what it originally was. So take that into account. It won't just double your scholarship amount magically. Your third source of income will be your internship or your on-campus jobs that you can get. For me, I did an internship at Ericsson, which was very well paid, but for that, you need permission from your supervisor. If you cannot have an external internship, you can always find some jobs on campus. For example, if you do speak French, and if you're studying at a French university, it will be very easy for you to supervise an exam, become an invigilator, or be a teaching assistant to some professor, or have some other administrative jobs on campus, which are like student jobs, and they can give you some money out of it. Finally, if you don't have any of these options, you can always get some minimum wage job like at a grocery store, at a clothing store, at a McDonald's, anywhere. Those minimum wages in Quebec are around $15 an hour. Do keep in mind, there is a limit to the number of hours you can work as a student here in Canada, generally your study permit only allows you to work 20 hours per week. So you can only work part-time as a student while you're studying. 
So if you want to use this income and expense calculator, I leave the link to it in the description. And if you want to know more about the scholarships, then go to my channel, search the word scholarship, and it will give you all the information about all the scholarships that I got. You can also go to my website, sadiakhaf.com, and you can find more detail in written format about the scholarships that I got. Don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter, and I'll see you in the next one.